G'day, I'm Warwick Schiller and today I want to talk a little bit about teaching your horse how to look for answers, teaching them how to learn. Uh, this video is probably going to be a little bit longer than most of the ones I normally do. Normally I try to keep them to three or four minutes, but this is a subject I, um, I probably have to spend a little bit more time doing. But initially training horses, one of the first things I really like to do is teach those horses how to learn, teach them how to look for answers, teach them that there are answers that are the same answers they're looking for and I'll get to what that means here in a minute but um, the demonstration I'm going to show you right here comes was told to me by a friend of mine who has a degree in psychology she's from England and to pass her psychology degree the last thing they had to do to pass their two I think it was a two-year degree was to teach a rat to tread water in a swimming pool at a designated spot okay rat treading water in a swimming pool like a kiddie swimming pool so this right here is a representation, some poles I've got out here, but this is a representation of the swimming pool. And so what she did was she, two things to start with, she put something like this, Australians call this a witch's hat, Americans would call it a traffic cone, we call it a witch's hat. If you're wondering why we would call it a witch's hat, there's a pretty good example of it right there. Um, she would put something distinguishing like that outside the swimming pool. Then in the swimming pool, she took a perspex tube, perspex thing that looked just like this. So it's clear perspex, and she placed it in the pool up against the wall, like that. So it's just below the surface. So if the rat actually finds it and stands on it, he can get his head out of the water. He can, he can save himself. So the first thing she did was she put the rat in the swimming pool. Now you think about when that rat goes in the water, what's his first motivation? His first motivation is, I don't want to drown. So if you've ever seen a mouse fall in a bucket of water or whatever, they swim around the outside. So that rat would have went, and he would have swam around the outside. So his motivation is, I don't want to drown. I want to find something I can get on. I can want to get out of this pool. And he'd swim around, he'd swim around, and they'll tend to do this, they'll swim around the whole thing, you know, trying to find, trying to get out. And what happens is the rat swims around, swims around, swims around, swims around, swims around. Swims around. And at some point in time, he discovers by accident, not because he's trying to, but by accident, he discovers this thing and he sits on it. He's like, oh, oh, wow, thank goodness. I thought I was going to die there for a minute. Then you take your rat out for the day, you're done. Next day, you put your rat back in and usually what will happen is the rat will start searching around again. And he's searching around and searching around. You're trying to get out. And by accident, once again, he's going to discover this thing. Okay? And you keep, and then you take him out, and you keep doing this every day, and at some point in time you'll put the rat in here, and let's say this is a building, okay, we're in a, probably a laboratory or something or other, and there's the distinguishing feature over here, it might be the door, it might be a window, it might be something big like that that you'd notice, you know, it might be the pitch of the roof, who knows, but after a while you put the rat in here and he goes, it's over here towards, let's call it a window, it's over here towards the window somewhere, and he swims over here and he climbs up on his thing and he's saved. You keep repeating the experiment until you put him in here and he just goes, swims over, there it is, even though he can't see it, okay? Once he knows that answer, he knows there is an answer, and this is a big part of horse training, he's got to know he can find the answer. So now he's not hoping, he knows. There's a difference between the whole, oh, I hope there's an answer, and I know there's an answer. Once they, he can do that, then what you do is you take your perspex tube and you place it somewhere else, okay? But you also take your distinguishing feature that's outside the swimming pool and place it out there too. The next day you bring your rat in and you put him in and he goes, okay, it's over here by the window. It's right about, oh God, it's not by the window. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die, oh, I don't wanna die. And he's trying to find his way out. And once again, by accident, he finds this thing, okay? You take him out the next day, he'll probably go over there. Oh, no, it's not over here, but it's in here somewhere. So instead of going, oh, no, I'm doomed, he's like, there is an answer. I'm going to find it. Swims around here, ends up on the Perspex tube. After a few days of that, he'll probably be looking at the big picture over here, and there might be a doorway, a big cupboard, who knows what. There's something big over here that, that's different from other stuff in the room. You put him in here, and he goes, okay, it's over here, right about... Oh. There it is, okay? Once he will do that, so he knows that, he, he, he knows there's that spot there. It's not a, 
it's not a coincidence he knows it's that spot there then you can move it again and let's say you move so you move your perspex tube and you move your distinguishing object somewhere else so the next day you throw your rat in here and he goes it's over here by the door it's 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 not here it's gone well, I know it's in here somewhere. It's got to be. It's got to be here somewhere. And he searches around, and once again, by accident, he finds it. And from what I've heard about this experiment, by about the third time, like the third move, instead of thinking globally, they start thinking locally. Instead of thinking, okay, is it the peak of the roof? Is it the window? Is it the door? They kind of go, what's what's that doing there? Hang on now. It was over there, and it was over there, and we can't tell what a rat is thinking, but from what I was told with the experiment, usually by the third time you move it, once they find it once, it only takes once for them to find it, then the next time you put them back in, it's like, it's the orange cone, the orange witch's hat. They go straight to it. Instead of like, it's, it's this side of the building or this side, it's where the sun comes up, whatever it is, they start to notice, you know. So it seems to be like the first time that they find it the third time, they go, hey, what's that doing there? Because the second time you put them back in, in the third location, they seem to know where it is. And then all you do is the next day, you'll move it here and whoosh, they swim straight over to it. Then you move it here and they'll swim straight over to it. It doesn't matter where you put it, they know where this perspex tube is because it's connected to this. You teach them how to look for answers. And then eventually what you do, you know, you've got to, they've got to be told where in the swimming pool there, rat has to tread water. Okay, so let's say the professor said, I want your rat to tread water there. What they would do is get to where the perspex tube's here, but then the next day, they'd move it to here. So when he's searching for it right there, he will bump into it there, oh, it's here. And then eventually you could get it to here, and then to here, and then to here, and then to here. And you get to where the perspex tube's there every day, Okay, you throw your rat and he swims straight over to it. And you want to do this a lot until he knows that's where it is. Okay, then what you do one day, you just say, Mr. Professor, I'm ready to pass my two year psych degree. And he goes, okay, let's see you get your rat to tread water right there. You put your rat in here, but you don't have the perspex tube. And he swims over and he goes, it's right here. I know it's right here, it's right here. It's not anywhere else, it's right It's right here. I know it's right here. Does that make sense there? So that's how, um, so that's a story a friend of mine told me with, with her passing her psych degree in England. I do something similar with young horses. And so, so if you think about that whole rat thing, it's about teaching him to look for answers. And I really like to do the same thing with young horses when I first start riding them outside. I mean, I do it in the groundwork too. Everything you're doing, you're teaching them how to look for an answer, not us to force the answer upon them, but teach them how to, to look for answers. But when I first start riding them, a lot of people have trouble with horses when they first start riding them. Um, you know, for instance, young horses, a lot of people first ride outside in a young horse, they say, oh, he's wobbly, he's wiggly. And they give a lot of reasons like, well, he's not used to carrying a rider. He's not sure what I want him to do. He's not sure where to go, he's unbalanced, he's young, he's a warm blood. The sky is blue today instead of green. There's a million reasons people think it's for, but what it usually is, is people are trying to, they get on, they come in here and they get on at the gate, okay? And the horse's comfort zone is at the barn over there, and they're trying to ride the horse away from where they want it to, where the horse wants to be, okay? If you think your horse uh, a young horse wiggles and wobbles on its first ride outside and you think it's because they're unbalanced and all that sort of stuff. Next time you ride your young horse outside for the first time, when you get on them, don't get on them at the gate. Ride them to the far end of the arena, to, I mean, sorry, lead them to the far end of the arena, turn around and point them this way and ask them to walk and you'll find they'll walk in a perfectly straight line, nice and forward and straight, all the way back to the gate and then they'll stop, okay? so. Think about the, the, the rat, his motivating factor was he didn't want to drown, that's why he was looking for it and that's how he found it. With these horses, they want to go to their place of comfort, okay, where they feel good. But they don't want to go to their place of comfort and run in circles. They want to go to their place of comfort and stand still. So that's one of the greatest motivators we've got with horses. And so when I first ride a young horse outside, 
what I'm going to do is probably hop on them away from the gate over here. Okay, probably about this far away from the gate. From the gate, the barn, the pasture with the other horses, whatever your, your attracting factor is. Okay, and I'll just ask them to walk. And usually they will just peel off and walk over there. And they, let's say in this case, they might, there's Zeke and Bundy over there. They might just go over and say, stop at Bundy. And when they do, I'll ask them to trot. Okay, they can be at Bundy but they can trot and you'll find that they will trot and they might trot in small circles, but small circles is quite hard. So this is basically the principle of make the wrong thing hard and the right thing easy. They'll trot in small circles and what you'll find after a while is they'll make that circle bigger to make it easier on themselves and drift away and then I'll offer them a place to stop. Okay, and the first time we stop away from there, it's very much like the first time this rat climbed up on this thing and found he saved his life right there. This horse is looking for a place he felt comfortable. He thought it was going to happen by the other horses. We're going to show it to him. It's away from there. And then you just keep doing that process over and over and over and eventually get further and further away. And so we've got a young lady from Texas named Becca Tate who's been staying with us. And Becca's been riding my young horse, Murray. And um, when she first rode him outside, I kind of walked her through this process. And, you know, initially M Murray would go over there she pick up a trot and he would just kind of loop around here and think I want to be here and then oh this is too much hard work and then he thought well maybe it's somewhere else and as soon as he came a little bit away from there we let him stop we planted that seed we said there is a place you can rest but you've got to look for it okay and then we expanded on that so we didn't get to film that but today I don't know how many rides Becca's had on him but today we filmed a little bit of it and so Becca got on him over here facing in this direction so he has the opportunity to walk that way if he wants to and she asked him to walk. First thing he just turned and walked over, I think he walked over towards Bundy over here. When she got there she picked up the trot and what did he do? He went back and forth like, hey I think over here is where I'd like to be and then he's like, no and then he came a bit away from there, I think it was over here somewhere, she let him stop. The next time she went, he went back over there, did a bit more, came over here and stopped and then eventually he went a bit further down there and stopped. Then eventually he ended up in that corner and stopped. And then eventually he ended up in the other corner and stopped. And once he's realized that every part of the whole arena could be an opportunity to stop, then what you do is just ride him around. And, and when Becca asked him to ride around, so there's no steering involved in this. We haven't told this horse where to go. We've used that motivation of a rest to try to shape his behavior. Um, and then by the end of that, I said to Becca, okay, and that's, that was his high tide mark. In the few days she's been riding him, he hasn't been down in that corner over there. Then I said, just go ahead and canter him around. And so Becca picked up the canter and he basically, you know, cantered around here and around there and around there and used the whole arena. Whereas when she first got on him today, and when she definitely when she first got on him the first day, his whole mental focus was over here, okay? But we taught him how to look for answers other than there and so he cruised around the whole arena on a loose rein without steering and that's one way I teach horses how to look for answers but it's also how I get young horses going forward and straight I don't make them forward I don't make them straight I take away the reason that they wouldn't be forward or they wouldn't be straight so I hope that uh, makes sense to you guys hope it helps see you guys next time